So welcome Bruins. I am your UCLA Alumni Association president, uh, D'Artagnan Scorza, and I am proud to join you tonight on our town hall series. You know, the goal of our town halls uh, is to provide a forum that opens uh, up conversation and dialogue with all of our alumni. Uh, we wanna make sure that we provide regular campus updates and engage in conversations with UCLA leadership, faculty, staff, students, and others, along with our alumni community. Now, we kicked off this series a few months ago talking about COVID. We have, we've had an opportunity to talk to Chancellor Jean Block. Uh, we've also had an opportunity to talk to our state and civic leader. But tonight, I bring a very special guest with us, and that's UCLA's new athletic di director, Martin Jarman, who started with us and will help lead UCLA's sports uh, enterprise into uh, success. Chancellor Block said that Martin is a proven uh, and principled leader with a deep commitment to the values that align with UCLA's mission. From Rayford Johnson to John Wooden, our athletics program has inspired our students and our supporters alike to persevere and to excel. Not only was Chancellor Block confident in Martin's selection, but he believed in his exceptional leadership, his integrity, and his excitement for our future. Now, before we welcome him, I'm gonna play a brief video for you, illustrating Martin's first day here on campus. Take a look at this video so you can see how we welcomed him to UCLA. And fun it will be. Martin, welcome to our, uh, our alumni town hall. Thank you, Darb. Good to be with everybody. Thanks for, for joining in. And um, yeah, I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this. Been looking forward to it. So Martin, we know that you came from Boston College and you're our now ninth athletic director, uh, but you've become a part of the Bruin family. First, just tell us, how does it feel to, to move to LA from Boston where the last time I was out there, I saw people jogging in the snow. So talk to us about your, your transition here to LA. You know, one of the craziest things that I like to run outside, um, I'm a runner and, and one of the craziest things is usually I don't like to run if it gets below 50. And, and so usually in Boston, I, I stopped running probably early to mid October outside or, or it would be just hard to do. And I'm running now and today it was like 84 degrees and, and uh, in January. And so I really appreciate the sun. I love that. I, I never imagined it would be this warm uh, during this time of year, but uh, it's, it's been a, a heck of a transition. Um, you know, there's no manual to, to tell you how to move uh, across the country 3,000 miles during a pandemic yeah. um, to a place you've never, never really lived. So it's, it's, been, it's been a challenge, but it's been fun also. It's, it's been exciting. I've just tried to embrace it and, uh, and just keep moving forward. Well, that's fantastic. And again, we're, you know, so great to have you here. I will tell you as a, uh, as an Angelino, Los Angelino who grew up here and, and I've lived in Mississippi, I've lived in Chicago, I've lived in Jersey. I have lived in cold weather. Uh, th there's nothing that really beats LA, I will tell you right now. <laughs> so, so welcome to, to, to UCLA, which has uh, location, 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 right? That's, that's sort of what we, uh, in addition to our excellent scholars and our athletes and, and others, what we bring to the table. Now, you know, we are in a really challenging time, right? We've had to deal with the, the, the pandemic. We've had to deal with COVID. And, uh, you know, who could have imagined what it was going to be like for us in this day? So sure. talk to us a bit about sort of how you're managing through this. Like, what are you learning during this, this moment that we're living in? 
what a time, you know, no one ever uh, a year ago around this time, no one thought uh, what was what was coming uh, would have this kind of impact, uh, not only on our, our, our country, but just the world and everybody's way of living. Uh, the things that I've learned, I've learned a lot, I've grown a lot, but, but one of the things is just patience and empathy, understanding that that everybody is going through this together, you know, and when there's a time that has such divisiveness and and unrest, whether it's social, political, uh, you need to have things that bring you together. And that's the thing that I try to focus on is what things unite us, what brings us together. And for me, it's starting with empathy, understanding that, you know, whether you have kids, whether you don't, whether you've lost your job, whether you're out, you know, everybody is, is struggling through this in some kind of form or fashion. So, so have an understanding and compassion and empathy uh, towards the people you work with, the people you interact with, engage with, and just understand it's not easy. It's hard for a lot of people. And so once you can, can establish that, and that's what I try to remind myself every day, it kind of gets you away from woe is me. It gets you away from we're all in this together and how can I help others? How can I be of service to others? That I'm not, I'm not by myself. Everybody's struggling, you know, and that helps me kind of get going and be positive and just be, be light, you know, be a light. Uh, that's, that's really important because everybody needs energy right now. Everybody needs positivity. And so I focus on that and that's, that's really important, but I've, I've tried to learn to just have a little more empathy and understanding for people right now, because it's all impacting us in different ways. That's right. And I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, perspective with us. For those of you who are just joining us uh, at our town hall tonight, we have welcomed Martin German, UCLA's ninth athletic director. Martin became a Bruin on July 1st, and prior to his term here at UCLA, he served as the athletic director of Boston College and has also been involved in athletic programs at the Ohio State University in Michigan State. If you have a question for Martin, you can email Julie Sina at J Sina, which is J S I N A at support.ucla.edu. We will very much look forward to taking your questions and having Martin uh, respond to them. So Martin, you know, I, I can tell you, you know, you are inheriting this phenomenal legacy, right? And in doing so, we'll be able to work very closely with, with our student athletes. So, you know, talk to us about how you're sort of helping to carry that legacy on uh, in this environment, in this day. I know, you know, when the NBA was, was, was in the middle of the playoffs, they had to keep people in the bubble, right? What, what's, how are you, you know, keeping our students uh, 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 engaged, excited, active uh, during this moment? You know, it's been a challenge for our young people. Our, our students have, have been so resilient, persevered through so much. Like you said, I, I started July 1st in the summer and it, it you know, that was a heavy time. Uh, in our country. And so one of the first things that I remember was, uh, was after the George Floyd incident. And um, it took me a couple of days just processing everything that was going on in our country. And I had a conversation actually with two or three of our student athletes. And one of the things that one of them said to me was, you know, UCLA is about um, leadership. It's about barrier breakers. It's about um, taking a step forward when others may not. And that's what I expect out of UCLA. And he said that to me and that kind of uh, crystallized for me very quickly early on in the job that um, what it means to be a Bruin and those that have walked before us and come before us and set the tone and the culture as far as UCLA being a leader in all fields and all aspects of our, of our culture, of our industry, of the world. And so for me, I, I wanted to jump in and, and get to listening and learning from our student athletes. And they wanted to be heard. A lot of them were, were, were hurting and, and a lot of them really wanted to, to use their voice or figure out ways that they could help uh, their community and ways that they could have an impact in what was going on around them. And so uh, we came up with uh, the Voting Matters Initiative. And uh, that's the one of the things that I told a, a group of them is, you know, uh, the first thing you need to do is, is understand your civic duty and the power you have in your vote. Uh, but before you can vote, you've got to register. you got to understand uh, the process. you got to understand what voting is in our country. you got to understand um, just the regist voter registration education and who you might be voting for and why. And so we were one of the first athletic programs in the country uh, 
uh, in July to start a voting matters initiative. And, and that was, was copied by a lot of other schools that called us and contacted us. And it was important uh, for me to not just make it a student um, initiative. This was our whole department because one of the things the students said was, I want our coaches and our staff to understand and be a part of this. I just don't want to go at this alone. So it was our, our staff, our coaches, our students, we all went through uh, a series of educational sessions about voter registration, understand voting in our country. And that was really powerful. And that, that happened early on. That might've been my first or second week. And um, I think that set a tone for us that said that we're gonna be a leader. You know, that's the expectation for UCLA athletics. And we're gonna be at the forefront. Uh, whether you like it or not, that's, that's who has set the tone, those that came before us. And that's the expectation and I don't want it any different. And so that was a galvanizing kind of thing. You know, you try to take a negative and turn it into a positive. I'm, I'm big on that. You know, you, you take your lemons and make lemonade. You make the most of the situation or the hand that you're dealt. You don't complain, you just do the work. It's the work every day and that consistency and that grit that's what that's what I rely on, and that's what our athletic program is gonna gonna rely on as well. That's right. I think we've seen uh, this year more than than ever, right? The strong relationship between social justice and sports, and and really in many ways, our, our athletes lifting up their voice. If in knowing the history of, of of athletes and their involvement at UCLA, there's been this long tradition. Uh, to your point, and to what your students have said about leading, right? And mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. it's right. And so I want to thank you for sharing my story. Now, you know, you came into a budget challenged organization, frankly, right? I think uh, athletics programs across the country have been facing significant uh, uh, budget challenges. There are conversations right now about whether or not student athletes should be paid. So I think the question that people have been wanting to know is like, how is your department handling this? How are you mitigating this? How are you dealing with the combined loss as well of revenue um, from the pandemic? Yeah, it's a big challenge and, and everyone knows it. And I'm, I try to be as transparent and straight up uh, and, and, and talk about things with candor as I can be. Obviously everyone knows last year, I, I think it was reported around 18.9 million uh, that, that that was an athletics deficit and, and then COVID happens and you don't have the ability to have fans. You don't have the ability to, to have sponsorship opportunities and revenue opportunities. And so, you're looking at not just UCLA athletics, but a lot of athletic programs in the country are hurting significantly. And you're not just talking about 15, 20, you're talking about 40, 50, 60 million dollar uh, budget hole or deficit that you're looking at this year based on how the rest of the year turns out. Uh, it's not just the revenue opportunities that are missed, but it's also the increase in expenses. Uh, testing, you know, COVID testing is, is a significant cost. And that's what we're doing to make sure that we give our young people a chance to compete and practice every day. Um, I, and, and speaking of that, I'm really proud of our student athletes. Uh, as of last Friday, I believe we had uh, 16,700 tests overall in our athletics community and about 45 positives, uh, probably a, a 0.27% uh, rate, which is phenomenal compared to LA County and, and where we're in. So. I'm really proud of that because a lot of people said, hey, you shouldn't be playing uh, because of it. But, but I would make the argument in the case from a mental uh, health standpoint, from a well-being standpoint, our, our young people being with their teammates, doing something that they love and having a, a focused effort uh, to, to pursue that passion, that, that really in an environment that we're being as safe as we can be, um, that's important. And that allows them to do what they love and it also to a degree helps keep them safe and do some of the things that maybe they wouldn't be able to do if they were having to work out on their own or, or go somewhere else and do things. So I'm proud of that, the resilience of our student athletes and the sacrifices they're making. I don't think people understand how much they're sacrificing every day to go to practice, compete, go to your, your dorm room or your apartment, uh, not have much interaction, rinse and repeat every day, do your studies online, uh, it's hard. It's tough. Not see your family. That's a big one. Um, it's a lot of sacrifice, but but Bruins are strong. That's one thing that I have learned, and and we're resilient, and I'm I'm so proud of them. But yeah, but no doubt, the, the budget situation has been a challenge. Uh, we're still working through that. Now it's going to be bigger this year. You know, obviously with COVID, it's going to be bigger this year. But we try to get ahead of some of it. You know, we're we're not filling certain positions when they come open. Uh, I don't think we've actually made a 
a new hire in the athletic department since I've been here. Every person that's left, we've either absorbed some of those duties or just held off um, in, in hopes of trying to salvage some of the money uh, that, that we're going to need. And, uh, and we're making decisions based on budget. You know, we've uh, significantly restricted travel. Uh, we're looking at budget and travel for all of our sports. I asked all of our sports to cut 15% from their budget uh, early on just to, to help stave off some of the challenges that, are, that were coming at the time. And, and everybody has been responsible and they get it. You know, we're, we're all in this together. And, uh, you know, make no mistake, we're going to come out of this. We're going to come out of this strong. I have no doubt about that. But it's going to take some time. You know, it's going to take some time. This is not a one year thing. This is a two, three, maybe even four year um, recovery that we're going to see, not just from a revenue standpoint, but also people coming back to games and engaging with your product the way that they normally do. Because you don't understand, we don't know the human psyche and, and how comfortable are people going to be to come back to games? What's the capacity going to be next year? All those things you're trying to project, um, but you can only control what you can. And that's so far has been some of the expenses and some of the things and ways that we do business. That's right. And no, I really appreciate you sharing that. So folks, if you're just joining us tonight, um, I'd like to welcome you to our UCLA alumni town hall. I'm your president, uh, D'Artagnan Scorza, uh, Double Bruin here, uh, serving our alumni community alongside some amazing board members that have joined us tonight, both current and former. I wanna to thank Todd Sergeant, Coretta Harris, uh, Mike Fong, Sal Lavino, and others for joining us tonight uh, alongside uh, this town hall. Uh, your alumni association board is proud to serve, our network's proud to serve uh, as leaders in our alumni community. I wanna thank them for their ongoing service and support. I also wanna thank uh, Rhea and Julie Sign, as well as Jocelyn, Gloria Clo, and a number of our uh, alumni staff who are deeply engaged and involved in this work here at UCLA. And so um, if you're joining us again, we would like to welcome UCLA's ninth athletic director, Martin Jarman. Uh, Martin became a Bruin on July 1st and joins us from Boston College. So Martin, we just talked about the, uh, the dynamic here, right? Of UCLA being sort of the athletics department being cash strapped. But what about this amazing hat you're wearing here, man? I see it. We all see it. That beautiful Jordan. Did you, did you catch that, Dart? <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm, I'm a Jordan fan myself. So tell us, you know, tell us about the Nike contract. What do you think it's going to do for us? How did how did you land that, by the way? You know, I'm I'm stuck on my Adidas, by the way. I just I just got to you know, admit it, you know. Well, we got to We got to I got to get your size. We got to get you outfitted come July 1st, man. We got to get I, you I, some. I, Count, count me in. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I appreciate you asking. And first of all, for everybody, normally I don't wear hats, uh, but this is a pandemic and it's Zoom. And I thought what better way to, to look at the future and the exciting things that we have than to, to wear the hat of our new par partner, Nike and the Jordan brand. Um, we're, we're extremely excited about this. Uh, this is big for us. Make no mistake, you know, an apparel partnership um, there's a lot of components to it. And, and obviously it's what you wear, it's what our student athletes wear, um, but, but it's also a financial component and, and there are a lot of things. But for me, you know, I'm more interested in what is the best. I feel like our athletic program and our student athletes are elite. They deserve the best. And I wanna give our coaches the tools to recruit the best and brightest um, that they can bring to Westwood. So, so that we can win and win big and win championships and compete every day. That's really important. And I, I, I think about an apparel partner from the standpoint of what is going to help us win, what is going to be uh, the best gear, innovation, technology that our student athletes can wear. Everything in athletics and competition is about an edge. It's an edge mentally. It's an edge on the field. It's an edge of how much you can drive yourself to be the best. And I feel that Nike and Jordan is that. Uh, from a from a apparel company standpoint, and that's what I want to align our our program with. And so for me, um, it was it was something that was a lot of hard work, a lot of effort, uh, but it came together, and it's exactly where we needed to land because I think you're going to see with our Nike and Jordan partnership, you're going to see some things that you've never seen before. We're going to be with the best, and I think uh, from from my seat, uh, I'm excited to see exactly where our teams and our programs can utilize this relationship and our partnership because it's what young people want to wear you know and and that's something that was really i had so many people reaching out to me about you know uh we want nike and we want jordan and 
And uh, it, it was a lot that went into it. I, I won't bore you. It would take a probably a two hour Zoom to tell you all the details that went into it. But I, I will tell you, we have a strong brand and that was important. And I, I shared with the Nike guys early on, uh, you know, Nike was interested, but the Jordan piece really wasn't there initially. And, and it came to a point where you know, we had to make a decision and I said, listen, for us to do this the right way, we need to be a Jordan brand. Um, we, we, we're the West Coast. There's only four other schools. The brand, the social, um, the, the, the championships, the winning, the success, the doing it the right way, the integrity of our program aligns with what uh, the Jordan brand family, Michael Jordan and Nike is about. And I said, if you can't see that, um, then we don't, we don't need to go. I mean, we don't need to go any further. And it was like a it was like a point where it was it was critical and and because uh, I don't know if we would have done it if we weren't going to get the Jordan piece of it as well. And that's where you got to represent and say, look, we're UCLA. You know, yeah. don't don't treat us like we're somebody else. We're UCLA and there's value in that. And they got that. and They understood that. And that's what I'm pleased about. So I'm excited about it. I, I think you're just going to see uh, it's a new day. It's a new day. And they're going to help us in our recruiting efforts. You know, in athletics, it's about talent acquisition and talent development. Those are the two things. Make no mistake. We're always recruiting. That's why I have this hat. We've got young people watching this right now, and I want them to understand what the Bruins are about, and, and it's an exciting time to be a Bruin and be in Westwood. And so I'm, I'm excited. I'm thrilled, and, and it's going to be a really cool partnership. You'll see. That's what I'm excited about. No, thank you so much for sharing. I do have my J's in my box in my closet, though. <laughs> Got to keep them in the box. <laughs> I've learned more about J's in the last month and a half than I've known my whole life. It's been crazy, man. It's crazy. So here's the deal. You know, a lot of questions are coming in now. They're asking about some of the bread and butter questions, um, some of the bread and butter issues that our, our athletic team, our students are facing. Like, for example, how are you maintaining academic accountability um, in uh, amongst athletes in the midst of COVID. You know, what, what's, how are you doing that? How are you supporting our student athletes to be students? Yeah, you know, that's a big one because the, the, the biggest concern you have when we went to remote, and again, I was at Boston College then, not here, but it was, it was across the board is, is how are our young people gonna respond when they have to learn in a different way, in a different environment virtual remote online versus being in person. And so um, that's something that our coaches and our staff talk about a lot. We have tutorial sessions with our academic advising. Uh, we do more checking in with our student athletes uh, about how they're doing. Some of them that are, that are learning or, or learn in a different way, more hands-on. We try to figure out ways that we can provide that um, in a safe way. But, but really it's just attention, attention to detail and how they're doing. If someone's slipping, we, 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 we have a system in place that we monitor that and we can, can be alerted to that and try to get them the resources or the help that they need, whether it's a certain class, certain subject, uh, to make sure that they're doing the things they need to do because everybody learns in a different way. And that's the one thing you can't forget. Um, I, I may be stronger seeing things in person in a classroom environment than on my screen. You know, um, just, just like me right now, you know, Zooms, some days I have so many Zooms that I just want to do a phone call and I don't want to do a Zoom because I don't absorb the information the same way. Our student athletes are no different. So we try to really be diligent and our academic services have done an unbelievable job with uh, shifting to the remote environment and giving our student athletes those resources being available at, at many different times uh, for the needs that they have. So that's something that we stay on top of because obviously the expectation for our student athletes is to be elite academically and athletically. That's right, both on and off the field, right? That's right, absolutely. So in line with that, you know, I, I have a number of, of UCLA friends uh, who were Olympians, right? So one of the questions that's coming from our audience is, how are we preparing them to you know, compete in the Olympics and to complete, compete nationally? And, and sort of what is the future of, our, of UCLA's relationship to the Olympics? That's a great question. I would tell you, I haven't spent a whole lot of time about the Olympics because all of our energy has been about this year and this COVID and this pandemic. You, you, you have to have so much energy and focus on the current environment right now uh, because it, we're just getting some of our student athletes in sports to return to training actually this past week. And so there's, there's been a lot with that. I, I, don't, I don't want to, uh, the Olympics is important, but but I would be shortchanging if I answered that question because I haven't given a whole lot of thought to 
the Olympics. What I've given thought to is how do we put our, our women's soccer program in a position to be successful to where they can practice and have a season this, this winter quarter? Um, those are the kind of questions you look at. What are some of the things that our football and basketball programs have learned going through this, the start and the stop, the mental uh, toughness that you have to have when you could get a game canceled all of a sudden or a practice or you have to pause or another team does something. What can we learn from those three sports that are either complete or doing it right now that they can share with men's water polo and some of our other sports that are gearing up right now. So it's really been uh, all hands on deck to try to get through this season and this academic school year. Uh, that said, obviously we have plenty of Olympians and we have elite programs that, that, uh, that have those aspirations. We're gonna always nurture those aspirations. We're always gonna do that and try to put them in a position to chase those dreams and goals because that's important to, to student athletes that come here to compete at that national level. So um, that's something that's always important, but as far as a specific plan, I haven't given much thought to it. I haven't had a chance to be able to. Uh, I'm a big believer in, and you can't have two feet in the future because then you don't pay attention to the detail of what's going on now. You can't have two in the present because then you don't see what's coming. Uh, you got to anticipate one foot in the present, one foot in the future. You plan uh, for today, but also plan for tomorrow. And that's what we've been trying to do. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you uh, lifting that up. And so, again, folks, if you're joining me uh, for the first time, if you join us for the first time, I am D'Artagnan Scorza, uh, your Alumni Association president, and I've been joined by UCLA's ninth athletic director, Martin Jarman. So, Martin, I got to just tell you, man, that sweater is fly, and people are loving it. So, you know, <laughs> I got my, I, I wore mine tonight too. You know, it's, 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 I told you. It's, like that, that Bruins right there, man. Come on, man. We got it. We got it. You got to tell us where you got that from. You know, <laughs> people want to get that sweater. I'm just letting you know. It's the chats are blowing up. They're like, yo, where did he get that sweater? Where'd you get the sweater? It's, it's the marketing 101. You got to, you got to email me or you got to join the, the, the Bruins. You got to join the Alumni Association first if you're not a member. All but, right. But you also need to join the Wooden Athletic Fund. And then I might, I might share that. You know, email me. Email me, and I'll I'll let you know. <laughs> you got to have a fun. You'll get the inside scoop. Now, here's the thing, though. With, you know, people are also asking. You know, with Nike, right? Nike has the signature colors. So, how is that going to work for UCLA gear? Are we going to unify the color scheme across the different sports teams? What's the What's the vision? What's the plan? People, people, you know, inqu uh, uh, inquiring minds would like to know. <laughs> so, so what I would tell everybody is. We won't be exactly how we're going to look this upcoming year. You really need to look at the following year, the 2022, 2023. And the reason why I say that is in apparel, orders are done in the summer, July and August for the following year. And so usually you work out color scheme, style. Um, does this work? Does that work? You do that normally in July and August, right? So the challenge with that is, as you know, we didn't get this deal done until November or December and uh, November, December timeframe. And so the, the reality is we're going to be limited in scope. And that's what I've told our coaches too. We're going to be limited in scope and options from a, from an athletic department, from what our teams are wearing this year, because a lot of things were already in place with Nike and Jordan that they may be doing for some other schools. You know, Jordan brand has four other schools, Oklahoma, Florida, Michigan, North Carolina. So you might see a piece that, that Oklahoma and Florida is wearing and it's gonna be in our colors. We won't necessarily have all the things that are gonna be Bruin centric for this upcoming year based on the cycle. We will have that for the following year. Once our coaches and our, our staff and our student athletes and everybody can have input on what they like, what the, you know, the feel, we didn't have a chance to do that. Normally they send you samples, you go through things, you try shoes on, you do all that. Um, because this was a, a shotgun type situation that was that was kind of dropped in our lap, so to speak, uh, with the situation, we didn't have the ability to do that. So you will see our, our Bruin blue and gold, you will see that. Uh, but as far as some of the other things, you, you won't see the full portfolio until the following year. Uh, but, but I do understand how important it is to have the right blue and the right gold. Um, I'm very well aware of that. I know we've had so many different uh, reiterations with whether it was Adidas or our former partner um, that I won't mention by name, but, um, but we're going to have a consistency and a unified look. Uh, that's what we're trying to establish with, with Nike and Jordan brand that will fully be implemented in the 22 
23 year, not necessarily this upcoming year. So, you know, thank you again for, for letting us know that. So I think, you know, we have a community of alums. Many folk are very interested in jobs and careers in the field, right, of, of, of athletics and sports. And so some of the questions we, we have coming in from folks are just, you know, how do you even get in? Like, if you want to, you know, eventually, uh, you know, move in to be a, a coach or if you want to, uh, you know, be uh, uh, in the field itself, going to athletics administration, what advice would you have for someone who is looking to make a transition? If they're an alum that's out there, they're ready to make that move, what would you, what would you say to them? The, the, the biggest thing, it depends on where you are in that and your cycle of professional experience. So my, my advice would be different from a 24 year old that, that just graduated three years ago versus uh, a 54 year old that's been working in the corporate sector for the last 20 years. So uh, everybody wants to be in athletics. So you got to understand that. So if you're on the younger side of your professional experience, I think you really need to get some kind of, of actual work experience in athletics. That is, that is big. What I mean by that, wherever you're living, there's a, there's a local high school, there's a local college that is competing in athletics. Try to volunteer, try to go there, meet with their administration and say, hey, I wanna, I wanna work this event. I'd love to work games. I'd love to get involved, understand uh, what a marketing plan is. You know, Doing different aspects, getting work experience. So when you apply for a job, uh, at one a, a college that you really want, you can say, yes, I'm, I'm working this job full time, but I also have experience working in uh, facilities, event management, operations, ticketing, marketing, fundraising, whatever it is at a school that is local to you. So that's the one that's one thing I would say is try to get some kind of work experience in an athletics environment. That's big because that shows people that you have an interest and you're doing this outside of what you currently do to try to get your foot in the door. Um, if, you're, if you're a little older on the professional experience and you have that, you, need, you really need to talk to some people about your, your professional work experience and what does that translate to? You know, if you're working in sales, for example, and you were to have a conversation with someone on my staff, we might say, you, mean, you might need to look at the marketing development area you shouldn't be looking at compliance if you're if all your professional experience is sales, right? It's you're not going to stack up when that job opportunity comes up. But 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 look at what that fit might be, and then you need to talk to at least five to ten people in that field. If I've been in sales the last ten years and I want to work in athletics, um, I look at okay marketing and fundraising because you sell, you have to sell in those, right? Then I look at what are some schools around me or places that I would like to go? And then I call, I, you know, old school, pick up the phone, shoot 10 emails off and say, hey, my name's Martin Jarman. I've been working uh, for, for GE for the last 12 years and I'd love to get in college athletics. Uh, I'm interested in marketing or development. Do you have 15 minutes that I could get on a Zoom or a phone call with you? You got to do that. And if you do that 10 times, you might have eight that don't respond, two of them will. And then two of them, hopefully you talk to, can tell someone else about you. And that's the way you kind of try to get your foot in the door. It's, it's, it's hard to get in athletics, but you can do it. It takes work, it takes networking, it takes communication, but you got to have some help. You got to have people in the business, in my opinion, help you out. Thank you. So at this time, I'd like to remind people that our Alumni Association uh, has created UCLA One. UCLA One is a uh, media network, social media network that will connect you to uh, professionals in multiple fields. So if you'd like to learn more about how to connect with people in your field or in a field you're interested in, please go and join UCLA One. You can visit UCLA One and or get access to it by uh, going to our website at alumni.ucla.edu again. You can join UCLA One and go to our website at alumni.ucla.edu. Again, if you're joining me tonight um, for the first time, I am your Alumni Association President, Gartanian Scorza, uh, and I've been joined by UCLA's Athletic Director, Martin Jarman, who is talking to us tonight about uh, our athletics programs and his vision uh, for our future and our success. Now, Martin, the biggest question that keeps coming up in multiple ways, in multiple iterations, is how are we going to win, right? What is your <laughs> for getting us to success? What does it look like? How are we going to get our championships back, man? Like we gotta, we gotta be, you know, NCAA one plus one plus eight plus. You know, 
We're perfectionists at this universe. I got to tell you, by the way, I teach in the public health uh, department and I, I have a lot okay. of students in my class. And, and not just the athletes, but all my students. I mean, we're, you know, UCLA students are perfectionists. They want to be successful in all they do. Uh, and so, you know, I think that's similar with our alums, right? Alumni want to, alumni want to know, like, hey, how are we going to win? How are you going to get us there? So take it away. It's going to take all of us to win. That's, that's the easy answer. It takes all of us. It's not one thing. There's no magic bullet. I like to tell people, however your program, whatever program you look at, whatever situation it's in, it didn't get that way overnight. So it usually doesn't change overnight. And so um, people don't like to hear that, but, but I'm about to work. And it's, it's every step. How does that get us to our goal? Of comp whether it's competing for a championship, competing for a national championship, you know, that's the expectation. And so how, how, are, we, how are we doing things in a manner that helps us get there? So, so when, I, when, I, when I think about that, um, it's, it's little steps. It's, it's the little things. You, you know, Alabama and, uh, just won the national championship in football. They, they didn't do just one thing that helped them win the national championship. It was a series of things and moves and decisions that go into that. Joining with Nike and Jordan brand, that is absolutely one of them. You know, that is going to help us recruit, in my opinion, it's going to help us recruit better. Kids want to wear Nike. They didn't, they didn't necessarily want to wear some of the other things that we've worn. Um, that matters. That matters to 16, 17-year-old kid. You yeah. know, you best believe that, that winning was on my mind when we thought about trying to get into Jordan and having that cachet. Um, so that's, that's important. Also personnel, you have to have the right people around you. One of the things I ask our coaches all the time, especially head coaches, tell me about your staff. Tell me where you're strong, where are you not strong? Where can we get better? What can I do to help that? What are some of your pain points? You know, we all have pain points in our job that get in the way of helping us be the best we can be. So that's one thing as an athletic director, I wanna understand your pain points. What are you having a, a hard time doing that maybe I can help or maybe I can better understand and jump in to, to, to alleviate that a little bit so you can do what you do. And that's develop, teach, inspire, and motivate young men and young women to be their best so they can do their best and represent the Bruins the right way. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long answer as far as what, it's everything, it's, it's everything. And um, you put your head down, you make some moves, you, you try to be strategic as much as you can you see where opportunities are and you take advantage of them. And, uh, and that's, that's what we're going to do every step of the way. And like I said, with the, with the apparel situation, hopefully you saw some of that because we could have done something different. We could have probably got more, not probably, we could have got more dollars, for example, going with someone else. We weren't going to do that. I want to win. I want to put us in position to help our coaches and our student athletes do what they want to do. And that's win and win big. And so, um, you try to make those decisions and you try to have a strategic plan that, that aligns with the vision of what we've accomplished and what we're capable of. And we're capable of winning at a big level. And that's what I'm excited about. Fantastic. When I know we have to really, you know, give you some time, right? we got to manage expectations. I think people need to really be patient and wait for the, that win to come, right? So I, I'm right there with you. I think a question that, that folk will continue to have is, you know, just at least what, what, what should success look like in the near term, right? What do we want to, what do we want to do? What do we want to see? Uh, what, what is your vision for success um, with the athletics programs? Uh, how would you, how would you measure, you know, uh, that both in the near and long term? Yeah, it's, it's real simple. First, integrity. We're going to do things the right way. We're, we're, we're not going to cheat. We're not going to cut the line. I mean, that's, that's not what we're about, but it starts there, obviously. Um, and, and our coaches and everybody understands that UCLA does it the right way. Uh, but this year is very different. Success, uh, by and large, is if we can play and compete and, and finish games and finish a season, because many, many programs are not going to be able to do that. You know, I was reading an article earlier today, uh, University of Washington, they, they played four football games this year. New, new coach, new staff, four football games, and the student athletes were um, so the article I read were, were talking about how it was such a roller coaster emotionally and they were disappointed. And, you know, we were able to play every game. We were able to play every weekend, uh, even though the time that we were supposed to play Utah on a Saturday and Friday, we shifted and pivoted and played Cal Berkeley on a Sunday. You know, so I'm, I'm proud that we got through the season because that means we allowed our student athletes to compete and do what they love. 
So success right now, even this, the winter and spring sports is, what's gonna happen these next two, three, four months? Are we gonna be able to, to get our games in and get our seasons complete seasons? Or are we gonna have uh, more disruptions? That's something that I look at a measure of success. Yeah. And, then, and then obviously every program is different. You know, my expectations for um, X program that has won three out of the last seven national championships is different than a program that hasn't won a national championship. You know, it's, it's incremental growth. Are we getting better? Are we moving forward? Are we pushing uh, the needle? Are we moving the envelope, like moving forward? And that's something that that is measured in different ways. It's not just wins and losses. It's your culture. It's your your academics and 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 how are we graduating and getting our young people prepared for life after uh, Westwood. Uh, and it's and it's also winning. Winning is important. Winning is a big deal. You come to to Westwood to win, right? And so that looks different though for every program based on where they are. And so that's kind of how I evaluate. I look at it each individually. I appreciate that. So. Folks, uh, we're going to be joined by a special guest here in, in just a few minutes. Uh, so please stay stand by as we continue to ask Martin a few more questions before our special guest joins us. Um, Martin, we're going to try and do a few lightning round questions, uh, and, and hopefully we can we can get through a couple of them very quickly. Okay. Okay. So, you know, a, a lot of folk, you know, well, the first question is how are we supporting our visitors, our Australian women's basketball players that are now here in Westwood. Well, the, the, the two freshmen from Australia, that's been a challenge. We've been trying to get them eligible to, to play here, but because of where the county is and some different things, it's, it's been a challenge. So um, it's, it's, it's just a heartbreaking situation because all they want to do is be here and compete and play. And, and Coach Corey and the staff have been unbelievable in, in pushing every button. And, and we're, we're, we've been doing a lot behind the scenes trying to help them. And, and uh, it's just been a challenge. So. That's the uh, fight we're still fighting and um, we're still pushing uh, even in the courts now as well. So we're, we're doing everything we can to try to get them here and, and let them do what, uh, what they're meant to do. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so look, we have a crosstown rival. Uh, it's the other university who shall not be named. <laughs> but, <laughs> they are, you know, they're, they're, that's a good group over there. I, I, I don't get mad at my USC friends. Um, so, you know, what is your relationship sort of with UCL, USC's uh, athletic director? What does that relationship mean for our schools? What does that mean for sort of sports and, and college sports in Southern California? You know, it's an important relationship. And, and, and make no mistake, obviously, we're big, big rivals, big competitors. We want to beat each other uh, bad. But, but outside of those competition days, there are a lot of things that we have uh, mutual interest in. And, and we need to, to have a level of respect, a level of alignment and, and how we move forward, especially in the shifting, uh, shifting industry of college athletics, things are changing a lot. And if, you, if, you, if you're a student of, of college athletics, you know that the only thing you can count on is change, whether it be conference realignment, whether it be name, image and likeness, whether it be um, just a host of things that, that come down uh, when it comes to college athletics. And so for me, I think it's very important that we strategically have a relationship uh, with, with USC and Mike Bone. And, um, and he's been great with me, especially just things that, that we have mutual interest, playing football, the county, um, different things that we're trying to do. You know, it's really important. And then in a bigger scale, I think you'll see more partnership behind the scenes uh, because we're California, we're LA. You know, and, and, and that's important. This is a huge market. It's a huge opportunity. And so as we move forward, we have to look at what ways that we can partner strategically that makes sense that's going to better UCLA and SC, uh, but really better LA and what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, that doesn't mean that, that when we get to, to that game day that we don't want to beat each other as bad as anything. Trust me on that. Uh, but you know, we got to we got to move the right way and we got to understand um, we can't play checkers. We got to play chess. And that's what that's what we're trying to do on a bigger scale when it comes to SC and UCLA. That's right. It's chess, not checkers. That's that's right. And that's uh, certainly, I think, a good analogy there. So um, a quick question for you. Uh, folk are wondering, like, what do you look for when you're hiring coaches? What are the traits or the skills that you want to make sure you have to ensure they get a successful program? 
integrity. I don't, I don't want to have to worry about you when I go to sleep at night. Energy, uh, positive energy. When you enter a room, do you bring people up or do you bring people down? What is your energy? I'm, I'm big on positivity. Let's go. Let's have juice. Let's bring people up. Um, they are your teacher. You know, do you teach the game? Uh, how do you treat young people? That is very important to me. So I, I, I look for, for uh, teaching, integrity, energy, and passion. You got to be passionate uh, to be in this business. You got to love it because it's a grind. It's hard. It's not easy. If you want to be great, you want to be elite, it's hard, you know? And so it takes a level of discomfort, pushing yourself beyond what you may think you can do that takes a level of grit, see it through perseverance, just sticking after it and staying on it. And uh, that's, that's something I look for in coaches because that's what I want to develop in our young people because that's going to best serve them when they leave Westwood. And it's also going to help them be successful on the field and in competition. Fantastic. So at this time, folks, we're going to go ahead and welcome our special guest who's going to be joining us. Um, this special guest is one of our leaders who comes from our alumni family. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Maddie Murray for joining us. She is the president of our Student Alumni Association, which is a 100 member volunteer group working with our UCLA Alumni Association to enhance the student experience and connect our student body with our incredible alumni. I will tell you, when I was an undergraduate student at UCLA, the SAA folk would reach out and they'd say, hey, can you give $5? Can you become a donor? Can you give back to the university? Uh, can you, you know, do you want to participate in D12? They put on spring sing. You know, SAA is a phenomenal organization that cheers our Bruins onto victory against our Trojan uh, uh, friends across the town. Uh, they make sure that they bring faculty and students together to enjoy good food um, and, and, and a host of other activities. Maddie, welcome to our UCLA Alumni Association Town Hall. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dart and Julie, for having me. I'm so excited to be here and talk to you all about everything that SAA has to offer right now, um, especially some opportunities for our alumni. So I'm really excited to get into all of that. We are so happy to have you. So Maddie, you know, you're a graduating senior, psychology major, and also the president of the Student Alumni Association. And we very much appreciate your leadership. So on behalf of our board and our networks, thank you for the hard work you're doing. Now, um, it's that time of the year, right? We got D12 coming up. I have participated in D12 every single year uh, for the past, God knows how many years, six years or so. Uh, so please tell us about D12 in 2021. Like, what are we looking at this year? Yeah, so like everything within the past 10 months, it's gonna look a little different than normal. Um, so right now we are doing all of our dinners over Zoom. Um, which is going to be really exciting that we still get to have them and make those connections with other people in the UCLA community, which is really the main goal of the dinners anyways. Um, the things that are going to look a little bit different, um, we are going to have all of the hosts sign up. So the signups actually close for the hosts on January 22nd. Um, and I'll go ahead and put the link in the chat for anyone that is interested. Um, so this will be for the host sign up link um, and you can go ahead and sign up there if you don't have a zoom link of your own do not worry because um we you will be provided one if you do not have one of your own um but basically we just ask that if you're interested in hosting a dinner um you pick a theme for your dinner it can be around a major or an interest background um so there's a lot of pre-med dinners or engineering dinners or you know anything that you can think of that really um can bring that group together and give them something in common to talk about but also just is a nice um, launching pad for the rest of the dinner. Um, so if you're interested in that, themes are really exciting. Um, no, go for it. I'm sorry, thank you so much for that, Maddie. Let me ask you a question. So, you know, SAA, the Student Alumni Association has had to pivot this year as a result of COVID, but you continue to lead our Bruins and keeping traditions alive. So tell us briefly, how are you doing that? How are you moving things online to, to keep folk engaged and excited? Yeah, so that's been um, one of the biggest challenges, but also a very exciting challenge that we've faced over the past year. Um, just kind of trying to think of new ways that we can innovate our existing um, events and also um, incorporate new programming into our um, events. And so we've, you know, made a new 
program called Bruin Pals where students are paired up with other students like under or uh, sorry upperclassmen and lowerclassmen in order to kind of build those relationships ask any questions um, so that's been something exciting is just being able to kind of think outside the box and move our programming into new ways um, we've also been very excited about no challenges with locations anymore you know normally if you're not in LA you can't attend our events but now alumni from all over the world um, can participate in any of our events, which has been super exciting. So we had, you know, our interview with a Bruin via Zoom. Um, and so alumni are able to host mock interviews with our current students to help them prepare for the interview setting. Um, and what's super exciting is that then we can have alumni from all over the world join that. So they're not really limited by location anymore. Awesome, fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. So Maddie, final question for you. You are a graduating senior this year and you have 200 some odd alums who are listening to you tonight. Now tell us, what are your plans post-grad? What do you want to do? So I actually finished school in December. Um, so officially an alum, um, which is very exciting, but also terrifying. <laughs> um, so currently just on the job hunt, applying to jobs like crazy, looking for stuff. Um, I am a psychology major and I was a Spanish minor. So just looking for things in the mental health field, nonprofit, anything like that. All right, fantastic. Well, Maddie, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. It is such a pleasure to have your leadership uh, in the Alumni Association. We enjoy having you at our board meetings, always thoughtful uh, as well. And so as we continue this conversation tonight, before we wrap up, Martin, I'm gonna come back to you because one of the biggest questions that people wanna know tonight is just, man, it's, it's COVID, right? Like you've had to move across the country in the middle of a pandemic. How are you finding balance in, in sort of, you know, with your family, with life? Like, how are you holding up on a personal level? I'm doing good. You know, I, I, I try to take time every day, usually in the morning. I try to get a little workout or a run or something in, but I try to I, I try to take some time just mentally to, to, to clear my mind and just to think. Uh, you need time to think and pause and reflect. Uh, I think that's that's usually when you have a job that, that requires and demands so much of you. You, you have to have that reserve. So uh, I've been good. I, I just try to make sure I take a little bit of time each day. Um, and then I just give every give it my all every day. You know, I know everybody else is, is struggling to a degree, but I just try to be positive, you know, control what you can control, be positive, uh, keep your energy up and uh, and just try to help people. You know, that's that's what we do. We serve. We serve others. And uh, so I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Glad to hear that. I will tell you, listen, I'm a big fan of camping. So for those of you. That have, you know, in the middle of this pandemic, camping has been a great way to sort of stay outdoors, stay by yourself with your family, you know, keep you so. So if you're looking for some strategies here in this fine Southern California weather, go camping as well. So, okay. So let me, let me, can I throw something in also? Yeah, please. I, I, I think this is a, a intimate group, at least. I want to share something that I haven't, haven't shared publicly. Um, but you're going to hear the word elite. From, from me and from our athletic program. And I wanna make sure that everybody understands what that means. Um, and elite is not the normal sense of the word like elitist. That's not what we're talking about. Um, when I say elite in our athletics program, elite is a mindset. Um, and it stands for energy, leadership, integrity, toughness, excellence, elite. And, and so when I think about that, we have to have energy, we have to have passion, we have to give it everything we have for our student athletes to help them be successful and put them in those positions. It takes leadership. It doesn't start with anybody else but yourself. You gotta lead yourself, you gotta take care of yourself. Integrity, we're gonna do things the right way. We don't cut corners. That's the expectation, that's non-negotiable. Toughness, if you wanna be great, it's gonna take time and effort and energy and, and, a, and a perseverance that you just gotta see it through. You gotta have grit and you gotta be tough. And so toughness is a big part of what we do and excellence. That's the expectation of Westwood, being excellent. That's what it means to be a Bruin. So elite, you'll hear that. That's a mindset that's going to drive us every single day uh, to get the results that we want and do what we know we're capable of. Well, Martin, what better way to end our conversation tonight than to call upon people to be excellent, right? To lead, to have integrity, to, to maintain their fortitude in this, in this very uh, difficult time in this environment. So I wanna thank you so much for joining us tonight. And Maddie, I wanna thank you as well as the president of our Student Alumni Association. Both of you have been such phenomenal guests. Martin, uh, just welcome to the Bruin family. Uh, thank you. 
inspiration to the work that we're, you know, we're doing here in the university community. We want to uh, uh, just honor and acknowledge uh, what you bring to the table and um, just demonstrate our gratitude for your leadership. So um, I want to thank all of you tonight for joining us at our UCLA Alumni Association Town Hall. I look forward to seeing you next month. We will certainly have another amazing guest to come and join us and talk to you about what's going on in our UCLA community. Again, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Please stay safe out there. Uh, stay healthy. Uh, we wish all the best for you and your family. And as usual, go Bruins. Go Bruins. <laughs>